Hello and welcome to another Brawl video. Today we're taking a look at a mono black life loss deck featuring Crick, Son of Yawgmoth, as our commander. This can already be cast for 4 mana if we're willing to pay 6 life. And then we get a 2 2 life link saying for each black mana in a cost we can pay 2 life rather than pay that mana. So it turns all our black mana symbols into Phyrexian mana symbols. And that also applies to activated abilities for what it's worth. And whenever we cast a black spell, we can put a plus one plus one counter on our Son of Yawgmoth. So that can quickly start growing so we can actually attack with it and recoup some of that life lost. So our commander can set up some very powerful turns where we cast it and cast a bunch of black spells in the same turn and it kind of lends itself to a combo playstyle where we try to assemble various two card combos. So to help with our deck breakdown here I've split up the deck into a few different categories the first one being our combo pieces. So we've got both the Exquisite Blood plus Sanguine Bond combo as well as Blood Letter plus Grey Merchant to try to drain the opponent to death and peer into the abyss alongside either Underworld Dreams or Shieldress but we'll take a close look at those cards in a second. Then to help assemble all these combos we also need some tutor effects so we've got a pretty large section dedicated to finding any specific card in our deck. And then we've got lots of ramp artifacts to play our commander a turn ahead of schedule or just start ramping into our bigger plays. And then our protection package includes targeted discard spells to take away removal spells or counters, but also ways to maybe save our commander from a removal spell, especially when these are one mana instants we can essentially cast for free if we've got two life to spare. Then we've got some removal ourselves to slow down the opponent's game plan. We've got the new Toxic Deluge as a powerful sweeper as well. And then we've got a pretty large section of card draw spells and card draw engines, including the new Necro Dominance to now join the old school Necro. So those are also powerful card draw engines we can cast in the same turn that we cast our commander. And then last but not least, the miscellaneous section includes more interesting combos with our commander, such as Font of Agonies, which can turn some of that life loss into counters, which we can use to mow down the opponent's creatures. We've got Aetherflux Reservoir to make up for some of the life loss, especially nice in combination with Bolas' Citadel. And then Ashiok can also make it so instead of losing life, we exile cards from our deck, which can then also synergize with the other abilities. So that's our deck in a nutshell. Now for the deep dive, starting with our combo pieces. So we've got a Veto, a 1-3 saying whenever we gain life, target opponent loses that much life. If we combine that with Exquisite Blood, saying whenever an opponent loses life, we gain that much life. As long as we can initiate one of those two cards, we can set up this infinite loop where we drain the opponent to death on the spot. And then now we can also replace a Veto with Sanguine Bond instead, which is another 5-man enchantment. Maybe a bit more difficult for the opponent to interact with, although it does come with a slightly higher price tag. Then we also have Underworld Dreams, punishing the opponent for drawing a card, which combines with Peer into the Abyss, targeting the opponent as they now draw half of their library and lose half of their life total. With Underworld Dreams in play, they will instantly lose the game. And we can also replace Underworld Dreams with Shieldred the Apocalypse, a great card in and of itself, but also sets up the Peer into the Abyss combo. Then the Blood Letter can be a two-card combo with the Rush of Dread, which I'm not including in this deck list. While it is an option, I'm mainly playing Blood Letter as a card we can pretty cheaply play once we deploy our commander, can double our damage output, and then also combines very nicely with the Grey Merchant, which can potentially win the game on the spot if we have enough devotion, and with Blood Letter doubling the damage output, that's a lot more likely. So these are some of the combos we can try to assemble, and then to help assemble them we've got various tutor effects, such as a new Insatiable Avarice, which we can spree in various ways. We can also just pay 3 mana to lose 3 and draw 3, and with our commander out we can do all of that by paying a life instead, but we can also search our library and put it on top and then maybe draw it. Got a Wishclaw Talisman, which can pay one mana, tap, and then the opponent gains control of it, but we can search our library for any card, so we can often play it early, and then once we're ready to combo off, we can activate it without giving the opponent a chance to find an answer. Grim Servant needs some devotion before it can actually find whatever we want, but can always find a cheaper card if needed. Besiege the Mirror will often require a sacrifice to enable bargain, so we can actually immediately cast the card we tutor for, but that's always optional. And then a final parting, especially nice to set up some of our reanimation synergies, as we can put an expensive creature in the graveyard as well as find our 1 mana reanimate effect, but it can still be used as a 5 mana shooter as well. And then a Cruelty of Gix can tutor if we start from chapter 2, but we can also start from chapter 1 if we want to accrue more value and can later also reanimate a creature, so it can also set up some powerful reanimation synergies. Then we get to the mana acceleration, Dark Ritual, probably the best one here, as we can already cast our commander on turn 2 if we wanted to. 
And then we've got some two mana, Ramp Artifacts, Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, Mindstone Transformer is a new one, and the Iron Crag. And then we also get to play with Jet Medallion, which can give all our black spells a one mana discount, makes it easier to chain a bunch of them together in the same turn. And then at three mana, I'm still a fan of File of Galadriel, since we can maybe gain more life with it or draw extra cards. The Celestus can also give us a bit of life gain in card selection. And finally, Worn Power Stone giving us two mana if we get to untap with it. And then we've got a bunch of targeted discard here with Duress, Inquisition of Kozilek, as well as Thoughtseize. And then Grief, if we evoke it, can also take a look at the opponent's hand, but we can also maybe cast it for four mana instead. And then Grief actually also combines with these Malachi Rebirth-alike instants, which are mainly here to just protect our commander. But if we happen to combine them with Grief, we can essentially scam our opponent on turn one, much like the timeless and modern versions of this deck. And then a Malachi Rebirth, not that after all, as well as Undying Malice are those one mana instants. And then I mentioned Reanimate already, can also be a cheap way to get back our commander from the graveyard, even though it's going to cost us a lot of life, but it can also just be a nice two card combo with our final parting if we put something like Villas or Gristlebrand in our graveyard, and we'll get to those in a second. Then our removal includes at 1 mana cut down a fatal push, at 2 mana go for a throat, heartless act, shielder's edict can also maybe get rid of planeswalkers and shoot the sheriff, and then consuming corruption is great as it can also be cast for free with our commander out, can maybe gain some life back if we have a lot of swamps in play, and this is one of the reasons why our mana base is mainly just basic swamps. And then Toxic Deluge, a powerful sweeper that can also pay life to give creatures minus X minus X until end of turn. And then Invoke Despair, we can also potentially cast by paying 8 life and 1 mana. So that can also be a powerful turn if we get to combine it with our commander. And then can also make the opponent sacrifice a bunch of stuff or draw some more cards. And then we've got more card draw effects with Warlock class. Can also eventually level it up to double our damage output, similar to our Blood Letter. We've got Preacher, which can maybe draw cards if it attacks. And then Frex and Arena can draw an extra card at the cost of one life, not playing with black market connections since we're already losing a lot of life in this deck, so the forced life loss on connections is a little bit too steep if we're just willing to draw cards with it, and we usually don't need the extra mana from the treasures since we already have our commander, which can kind of help with the discount. Then we do have the two Necro enchantments, including the new Necro Dominance. So these can also be a great way to refill our hand if we're close to empty handed, even though we will skip our draw steps and wouldn't be able to set up any graveyard synergies. And then a Dread Presence, another reason to play a lot of swamps in this archetype, as we can now play a swamp to either draw a card and lose one life, or deal two damage and gain two life, so that can also maybe give us some life back. And Professor Onyx can also maybe gain us more life with the Magecraft ability whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, making the opponent lose two in the process. And then the plus one can find more action, whereas the minus three is another edict effect to make the opponent sacrifice their largest creature. And then finally Bolas' Citadel can also start casting spells of the top of our deck by paying life instead of their mana cost, so we will need some way of gaining life to sustain it, but especially nice in combination with Aetherflux Reservoir, one of our miscellaneous cards here. Whenever we cast a spell, we gain one life for each spell we've cast this turn, and if we ever get to 50 life, we can also deal 50 damage to any target. Then I'm also trying out Winter Moon to punish greedy mana bases. Players cannot untap more than one non-basic land during their untap steps, so especially powerful against three plus color decks that tend to run a lot of dual lands. So now we force the opponent to fetch for basics if they have them, and since we're only playing basic swamps for the most part, it's not really going to affect us. Then Font of Agonies has great synergy with our commander. Whenever we pay life, we get that many blood counters and can pay two mana, remove four blood counters to destroy target creature. So we can often destroy multiple creatures with it. And then we've got Frexen Obliterator as a great way to increase our devotion to black for various synergies like Grey Merchant. And then a 5-5 creature that especially red and green decks can struggle to deal with. And then we mentioned Ashiok a few times, says if we would pay life while our library has at least that many cards in it, exile that many cards from the top of our library instead. So now we can pay life with our commander's ability to our heart's content for as long as we have cards left in our library. And then we can use the plus one for card advantage, the minus two to make a pair of nightmare tokens that can grow over time, and then the minus seven can also be game winning if we have enough cards in exile. And then finally our two eight mana demons, Villas and Gristlebrand. Villas especially synergistic with our commander because whenever we lose life we draw that many cards, and then Gristlebrand can pay seven to draw seven, so that can also immediately refuel our hands and maybe start assembling some of those author combos. 
and then our mana base, as we alluded to, 38 basic swamps, and then our only non-basics can generate additional mana, Nykthos counting our devotion to black, and then Cabal Stronghold counting the number of swamps we have in play, so the more the better. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Chulane, Teller of Tales, so a deck with lots of ETB effects and creatures. This hand is potentially okay. Both Ashiok and Font of Agonies kind of synergize with our commander if we pay a bunch of life. So yeah, we could potentially dig towards a combo. The only concern is that we don't have a particularly fast hand, no mana acceleration, also no real cheap removal. Could of course evoke grief, but there's no card I really want to get rid of. So I'll just play the fonts. And then we'll uh, wait and see. Toxic Deluge, alright, that gives us a catch-up mechanism in case our opponent is off to a faster start. And more synergy with Font of Agonies and Ashiok. So I guess Ashiok replaces the life loss by exiling cards from our library. So if we have both Ashok and Font, I don't think we get any blood counters, but we'll see. Ooh, Winter Moon. Opponent already has two non-basics in play. Yeah, that could be pretty effective here. And Grim Tutor right now kind of wants to just find a land. And then, yeah, if we draw a land, that would be great. Can either cast Crake or Grief. Misty Rainforest probably wants to get a basic now. Incubation Druid's next. Okay, and a Mind Stone. All right, so for now I think we just play the Mind Stone. I'm not really in a hurry to do anything else. If they want to tap out for Chulain next turn, we should be able to deluge everything away. Another non-basic. So Winter Moon is having an effect on the game for sure. Kinon's next, all right, that makes our Deluge even better, but opponent does now have access to quite a bit of mana. And a Guardian Project is a good one to get in play as a way to get ahead on cards again. Opponent also has two lanes untapped, but we can maybe check for a counterspell by evoking grief. So yeah, we certainly have options. Could play my commander, and then I guess we're a little short of also casting Deluge. But that would be fun. I don't know if I can let my opponent untap with all this mana and Kinnon, especially with the Guardian project now. So the most conservative play would be Evo Grief and then Deluge and then maybe get rid of my uh, Grim Tutor, keep Ashiok, since Ashiok can potentially find us more cards. Although Grim Tutor finding any of our card draw engines is also powerful. So maybe it is pitching Ashiok here after all. And then Grim Tutor maybe gets a Necro to uh, find us more cards. And then Necro plus Font of Agonies is kind of a combo. Opponent did have a subtlety after all, so... That will bounce our Grief back. And also draw off Guardian Project, so that's pretty neat. And then do we want Grief on top of the deck? I mean, opponent's got one card left, so hopefully it's not another counter spell. And then I don't really need Grief anymore. I guess they will have a second card here, but point still stands. Alright, there we go. Board looks a lot cleaner. And then Font has its first two counters, so that could also be an answer to Chulane. Alright, Point is just going to keep their mana available, maybe because of Winter Moon. And a Bolas of Citadel, that's going to be awesome. So this may not resolve, but I'll still cast it, and then I only have to pay for life. Font already up to six counters. 
and our, our opponent has had enough of our Winter Moon, has to bounce it with Ottawara, play Chulane. But yeah, Winter Moon still coming back. So next turn we could use Font, take out Chulane, play a 3 mana Bolas of Citadel, and still maybe a Winter Moon. So we can tap the Mindstone. Try Bolas of Citadel. Get more counters on the font. And then shoot the Sheriff, I'm probably not gonna cast. Could still Grim Tutor, that also shuffles the top of my deck. And then now I probably want to get more life gain. Could Tutor for Dark Ritual technically too, still cast it to play Winter Moon if we really want to slow down the opponent. That's also an interesting option. But uh, yeah, just getting a card like Aetherflux Reservoir in combination with Bolas of Citadel could be good enough. On to the next one. Are you attending MagicCon Amsterdam this weekend? Then make sure to come say hi during the Creator Meet and Greet on Saturday and you'll walk away with one of my tokens while supplies last. Alright, we're on the play facing Harbin, Blue-Eyed Soldiers. Can be quite aggressive. We have Dark Ritual, Grim Tutor might want to get Toxic Deluge in this matchup. Besiege is another tutor, so we could also try and set up a combo. If I have a discard effect to put Villas in the graveyard, we could also try to reanimate it, but don't really have a lot of discard effects. So this one's tricky. Dark Ritual is definitely a reason to keep, just because it can enable some busted starts. Yeah, let me try it. So yeah, I could essentially Dark Ritual now, Grim Tutor for Thoughtseize, and then turn 2, Thoughtseize myself, discard Villas, and then reanimate it. Kind of all in on the Villas plan, but maybe that could work. Sure, let's give it a shot. How often do you get to try this? can just double check if there's any better discard outlets, but I can't think of many. Grief forces me to exile a card instead of discarding it. Could also just get like a necro effect. But uh, if I then discard it gets exiled, so that doesn't work. And there's always the option of getting Toxic Deluge. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of into the reanimation plan here. So I'll have to get a Thought Seize to grab Villas. And then next turn we can already go for it. Esper Sentinel, yeah, that's gonna trigger. Font of Agonies is interesting, although these make me lose life instead of having to pay life, so it's not quite going to give me the counters that I want. So I'm just going to stick to the plan and hope they don't have a clean answer to Villas. Because if I get to untap with it, we can decimate the opponent's board. And yeah, uh, I guess we immediately get to draw Villas. Didn't even think of that combo. And then uh, Grief could now be evoked, and alright, I guess our opponent was out of answers and concedes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Scytherix the Blind Dragon. So opponent's going to try to poison us, which in a way is a good thing, since that means we can more freely use our life total as a resource. This hand has some nice mana acceleration, Malika Rebirth, a way to protect our commander. But then we're kind of missing a card draw effect to maybe assemble the Exquisite Blood Sanguine Bond combo, for instance. So this one's borderline, just because of the lack of card draw effects. But I'm still gonna try it. And our opponent had a Thought Seize anyway, which could have punched a hole in our game plan. Could see them take Rebirth so they can more easily take out our commander. Takes the Medallion. That's fine. Can still play an Iron Crag on two, Crick on three. Opponents got their own artifact. Now, what we don't have is removal for Scytherix, so that's still potentially a concern. And Red Presence was a good draw. Okay, so. Player Commander keeping a Malachi Rebirth. That can stay as a mana producing artifact, even though suiting up our commander to gain more life can also be a strategy sometimes. 
So you could see a blind dragon with haste. Or they might wait to try and keep up regeneration as well. Alright, march for five. Can still rebirth for free. And get it back. And then now Dread Presence can start drawing. I think that's better than playing Exquisite Blood for now. Don't know if I'll need the extra mana, but it's probably a fine plan for now. And just draw Swamp. Okay, don't have any removal or protection spells left. And yeah, wouldn't be surprised if they actually transform Iron Crank, so next turn they could be presenting Lethal with Scytherix. But uh, no opponents keeps it as a ramp artifact. So they might have a different way of pumping Scytherix next turn. What they don't have is regeneration, so if we did find an answer here, we could cast it. Warlock class. Okay, so I'll pay two life. I guess we can uh, pay two life here as well. It's not mana costs, it's any costs. And find Professor Onyx, that's an answer to Scytherix. So that works. Font of Agonies could also work, although I don't have a lot of ways left to pay life this turn. So Professor Onyx it is. Now they could still have another protection spell to save Scytherix, besides regeneration, but we'll see. No, that works. So now it's going to be 7 mana for them to replay it potentially, unless they have a cheaper reanimation effect. So then they won't be able to also increase its power to uh, poison me for 6. So we should get another turn at least. And yeah, Exquisite Blood, not at its best when gaining life doesn't help against poison, so... Professor Onyx maybe needs to find more answers. Ooh, Necro. Probably doesn't help me too much right now. So we'll start by plussing. Find nothing super useful. Grab an Inquisition. Since that can maybe grow my commander. And then let's see. We can double our damage output, so I guess that would do it in combination with an attack. So sure. Can deal two to any targets, go face. Inquisition. Could still cast Necro just to get an extra counter, attack, and then double the damage with our uh, class here, and that's game. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Roxanne, a red-green ramp. And uh, yeah, Winter Moon, probably not at its best, Pwn's only playing two colors. They'll have plenty of basics and other ramp cards. And Bloodletter, I guess with the Grim Servant, could maybe get a Grey Merchant with Avarice. To try and set that up. Dark Ritual can play a turn 2 Bloodletter, or we can save it to cast Crick. And then Bloodletter is pretty cheap to play. And then uh, Grim Servant will have a ton of devotion. So this hand has some pretty interesting combos available. Ideally we also keep hitting our land drops. I'll try it. If they can immediately take out my commander, I'm gonna be pretty sad. Opponent with Forest Utopia Sprawl. And Besiege is a draw. Alright, uh, I think we go for the commander. And then just hope that they cannot answer it, basically. Could still cast Insatiable Avarice, targeting myself to draw. That can maybe hit my land drop. 
All right, found it for next turn. We are down to 10 life already. And a Gilded Goose, that's acceptable. And a Signet. And get to untap. Okay, so the eventual game plan will be to get a Grey Merchant, I think, which will gain us more life back. I don't think I'm too interested in Winter Moon. For now, I could play the Deep Cavern Bats and a Bloodletter, paying some life. Check out if the coast is clear, and then next turn Grim Servants can grab our Grey Merchant, perhaps. And the One Ring, Primeval Titan, yeah, they've got some good cards. Next turn they can play Roxanne, which will take out the Bat anyways, so it's not gonna stick around for long. And they wouldn't be able to cast Primeval Titan yet, so may as well take a card they could cast otherwise, like the One Ring. And then we can still cast Bloodletter before attacking, so we can gain 5. And then Bloodletter could also maybe help us deal more damage. So we're back up to 9. Opponent at 15. I imagine it's just Roxanne clear the bat. Winter Moon, while not very good here, could still be sacrificed to Beseech to enable Bargain. And uh, Consuming Corruption was an excellent draw. So play a land. Can Corruption for free, taking out Roxanne. Can still Grim Servants and get Grey Merchant, and then next turn that should set up a potential win. If I Winter Moon, I can Beseech and cast something for free, essentially. That's also pretty powerful. Maybe that's even better, and then next turn we can still set up the Grim Servant play with Grey Merchant. So let me Consuming Corruption... Roxanne, paying life. And then we can Beseech. And then want to get something for four mana or less. Aetherflux Reservoir comes to mind. Shieldred could be good as it also punishes the One Ring. Fraxion Obliterator is pretty good against the red-green deck, since they won't have easy answers to it. And then next turn, I guess, Servant into Grey Merchant with Obliterator has a ton of devotion. Yeah, I can buy that. Attack. Yeah, Dark Ritual, casting our commander early, can set up some pretty nutty sequences. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Pantlaza, so a dinosaur deck. And uh, sure, the sand could work. Got some mana acceleration, bit of removal, can maybe take out an early mana elf. And then Warlock class can keep digging towards maybe one of our combo pieces, and then Talisman can grab the other half. Still maybe better to play the idol, so then turn 3 we can both Warlock class and play another 2-drop. Could also play our commander, play Consuming Corruption right away. Alright, and now Necrodominance is a draw, so that can also refill our hands nicely. Still in favor of Warlock class, maybe play Talisman, and then wait on Necro until we have fewer cards in hand. Alright, opponent with a get lost. So I guess that will prevent us from drawing an extra card. Although they might regret it after they see Necrodominance. And in fact I can cast a bunch of these after playing my commander. Opponent keeping up 3 mana means that if they do have removal that could be a bit of a setback. But uh, yeah, I'm still in favor of playing my commander. Paying a bunch of life. And then I could also play Phyrexian Arena instead of Necrodominance. If we see removal and response on Son of Yawgmoth, then um, we can readjust. That works. Nope, opponent's got a Fateful Absence. So if I Consuming Corruption, 
That's unfortunately not going to help since we go up to 4 toughness and then deal 4 damage to it. Maybe in a slightly different situation it could have worked. And then probably still worth sending back to the command zone. Even though Wishclaw Talisman could get like a reanimate to bring it back. Okay, still get to draw an extra card each turn. Corruption will gain more life. That we can then spend on Necrodominance. And now Kogla and Yidaru, so yet another disenchant effect takes care of our Phyrexian Arena. So now do we replay our commander, followed by Necrodominance. Yeah, it's a lot of life to pay, but I feel like it's worth it. And then we'll still have Consuming Corruption up in the opponent's turn. Although I guess never mind, with 3 life I can't actually cast the Corruption anymore. How much life to pay? How about two? Because we're dead to a bolt anyways. Yeah, if it weren't for Corruption or Talisman, we could have been locking ourselves out of the game by casting Necrodominance. Cultivate is acceptable. Yeah, using your life total as a resource here. So, what do we want to do next? I can wish claw for something, we can also start exploring, we can draw with a clue, so we certainly have options. Since I don't have a combo at the ready here to immediately win the game, I don't think I'm in a hurry to use the wish claw talisman, and instead we can go exploring. Inquisition feels like they've cast most of their cheap spells, so I don't think that's going to do too much for me. Here into the Abyss means that Shieldred could combo with it. So yeah, that's maybe worth keeping on top. And then I can immediately draw it with our clue. Keep up consuming corruption instead of attacking with Guardian Idol. Back up to 6, so we're not dead to a Lightning Bolt at least. And then I think we can still wait on Wishclaw. And maybe draw two more cards. Okay. Final parting, another Tutor effect. So I'm hoping they present a creature here. Itali is a little bit too large for me to Corruption. It's Mindstone and the Great Henge. Alright, we'll be able to take it out next turn. And then with Crick we can gain some more life. And then we might have enough resources to combo off with uh, Peer into the Abyss here. So could also Corruption the Paleontologist, I suppose. But then, let's see. I guess I'll cast enough spells to get us above 7 toughness. So sure. Back up to 10. So we can Talisman get Shieldred. Could also actually go for um, Underworld Dreams, which is maybe a little cheaper, as I can just use my life as a resource. Play Underworld Dreams, opponent knows about Peer into the Abyss, and then as long as we can cast both, we're good to go. Plus we could get another attack in with our commander if we needed to gain a bit more life. And that's game, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Tamyo, Inquisitive Student. So our opponent's going to be drawing cards. Our hand's got a Winter Moon, which, yeah, opponent's playing two colors, they might have some dual lands. Still not going to be at its best here. Can always sacrifice it to Besiege. But my hand, I guess we can grief, although don't really want to pitch anything to it. So it would be going for a turn to Edict, maybe answer Tamiyo, although not before they get to attack with it. Yeah, this hand's kind of awkward. This is better. Can play Preacher turn one, and Blue-Green's not going to have many great answers to it early in the game. As opposed to hold this until turn 2 to play my commander, can immediately play Underworld Dreams. 
I think I prefer Preacher on one. Especially when both players are still at 25. And then actually Underworld Dreams not bad in this matchup either, since our opponent's interested in drawing cards. So we can uh, punish them for it. And Mox Amber is kind of scary here. So they can already cast a 3-drop, gets a Hedge Maze instead. So as it turns out, Winter Moon could have been okay, but then they probably would have fetched for a basic instead. Alright, so start by attacking. Can play Transformer. So they probably have a bunch of counter spells in their deck to protect Tamyo and uh, to keep up alongside their clue tokens. Opponent brainstorms, yeah, that's the easiest way to quickly transform a Tamyo. Now Preacher only triggers if we attack a player to make a 1-1 Vampire. But it doesn't care who we're attacking to draw a card, so it could still go after Tamio. And then we'll see if they uh, just plus here, most likely, unless they can proliferate. Use your words. All right. So step one: attack. And then if I play my commander, it's most likely getting countered. Words can't fix if it's with a uh, mana drain, it's going to be particularly painful, giving the opponent 7 mana. The alternative is maybe just Underworld Dreams, they probably counter that as well. Or we can bait with Veto, which I don't really care about right now. Yeah, sure. The downside of Veto is that it doesn't really pressure Taimyo, since it only has one power but it could still contribute towards a two-card combo later. I opponent had the charm, so pretty happy with that exchange. We made them counter our worst card. Now the ultimate is no joke. So we do need to start pressuring Tamiyo a bit more. Problem is my hand doesn't really do that all that well. Start by attacking, and then... Could try Ashiok, which can make a pair of tokens. Now Beseech can maybe get a, an answer for Tamiyo, so that's unlikely to resolve either. So yeah, I think we go Ashiok, get this countered, and then next turn we have a bunch of options between my commander, Beseech. Okay, put and let it resolve. So now... We can just make some Nightmares. And those can maybe help pressure Tamiyo. It is also possible our opponent can figure out a way to proliferate three times and then they can still ultimate next turn, but it's not going to be easy. Maybe like an Evolution Sage with an uncracked fetch land can proliferate twice. Another cheap sorcery could do it. So yeah, that's a lot of power out of a one-mana creature, essentially. Recovery back the charm. And Sanctuary without an extra island, so just a tap land here. Now they do still have Mox Amber producing blue for now. So yeah, I think the plan is start by plussing Ashiok. See if we find something useful. A grief and Bolas the Citadel. Interesting. Both of these could be pretty good. If the charm is their only counter spell, we can take it with grief and then clear a path for our commander into, at the very least, Underworld Dreams. We can also maybe Beseech for an answer. Could also go for Bolas the Citadel and then hope to resolve it in a future turn to go off. Especially nice with our Ashiok on the battlefield since we can just exile cards instead of having to pay life. So it's much easier to cast a lot of spells at the same turn. I think I'll still try the Grief here to see if we can just take their only counter. Oops, uh, I guess it's been a while since I've played with Ashok. And yeah, you click on the card you exile, not the card you want to put in hand. Not the most intuitive 
design here. So yeah, I guess we ended up with Bolas Citadel. We'll have to make it work. Still gonna try to cast my commander, which will then enable Ashok's ability to help grow the tokens, so those can deal more damage. And Stern Scalding, a nice one mana answer here to my seven mana creature. Not bad. So yeah, still get to grow the tokens, attack Tamiyo, and then next turn we can maybe try to resolve a Bolas of Citadel, we'll see. Has Mina's Transmutation now, an answer to Preacher. Okay. What's next? Bolas Citadel is pretty sweet with Ashok, to be fair, so. Don't hate that combo. They could also use Archmage's Charm to steal one of my tokens. So, Inquisition to take that away is pretty good, so make sure to keep the Inquisition instead of exiling it here. And uh, that's step one. Do they fight over it? If they do, we can maybe resolve a Bolas of Citadel. Yeah, they're just going to steal a token, as we suspected. And a Lofty Denial. No need to pay for it. Play Citadel. And cut down the perfect answer here. Still plenty of cards left in library, and that's good enough for a concession. Alright, so a slight misclick with Ashok in the end actually worked out. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Bristly Bill, a landfall deck. And we've got multiple ways to protect our commander, not sure if that's too useful. We've got a ramp into kind of nothing here, so I'll take a mulligan. Alright, this is a little bit better. At least a final parting can maybe set up an exciting combo. Turn one Mystic. So our opponent off to a pretty quick start. And a fetch land represents an extra landfall here. Alright, Toxic Deluge can give us a way to catch back up. This card's been great in general. Hope they play more creatures out. Just hitting us for four. Alright, in that case, go for the throat. Maybe a better answer to Bristly Bill. And then I don't have to play my commander yet, so we can just pass the turn, maybe in their upkeep. Go for the throat. If they're gonna fetch, I think we go for the throat now before they get an extra landfall. And we'll see if they maybe have a protection spell. Antish Restoration, all right, fair enough. So they do still get to get the extra effect here and then turn extra landfall. But yeah, if I cast a Deluge, I would have had to name a pretty big number to get rid of Bristly Bill, if you count all the extra landfall triggers. Now they have a chonky Elvish Mystic. And they're just gonna replay Bill. Alright, hopefully they diversify here instead of growing the Mystic even more. And they do. Still leaving the Fabled Passage uncracked and not even attacking with the Mystic, so they might have other plans. Don't want to play my commander before I play Deluge, so I kind of have to go for it now. And then, yeah, at the very least would need to name six, but if they have, let's say, Harrow, Sacrifice a land, put two more in play, then that's two more landfall triggers. So I might have to name eight to make sure we take care of the Elvish Mystic. But now we're down to 13, so don't have too much more life to spare. I 
And our opponent just had a Kami to channel. Fair enough. So our opponent's board is nice and clear again. And then next turn I can cast this only having to pay two life. But Bristly Bill already back in action here, so there's no stopping it. Not gonna cast Underworld Dreams just yet. Six life is a little steep. Opponent has the ramp through. Hope this works. Decline so we can get it back from the graveyard. Okay, so we're still potentially taking quite a bit of damage here. They could have a second removal spell. And at this point, I don't think I can final parting to set up reanimate. Ooh, wow, Traverse the Outlands. So three more Helanes. I guess that's one short of lethal here. That's eight damage. Could have been awesome if they still had a 5-5 five, five, or 6-6 six, six creature on the battlefield. And now a Flare of Cultivation to get more lands. And end up with a 7-7 seven, seven bill. Okay. File of Galadriel to draw. Let's see here. If we would gain life while we have 5 or less, gain twice that much. So that is actually a combo with just attacking here. So if I go File... I can still final parting and be tapped out. And then we attack and gain eight. So the next turn they can just activate Bill to still win the game. So yeah, I basically need to final parting for a removal spell here. So I can't afford to play file first. And then maybe the safest removal spell to get is like a, an edict. Consuming corruptions, only six. So it doesn't quite do it. Yeah, I think I get Edict, which plays around a protection effect. And then I can put something expensive in my graveyard to maybe later bring back. Like a Gristlebrand or Villas. So put a card in hand. And cast Edict. Sacrifice non-token. And attack for five. Now our opponent's got plenty of mana to replay Bill once again. It would let me cast Underworld Dreams since I have six life, but then I would die on the spot, so I don't recommend it. And now Armorcraft Judge to draw. Okay. And Red Presence, don't have a swamp to go with it. So, play File. We just want to grow our commander at this point. If I go Underworld Dreams plus Dread Presence, I'm not playing File, which would be nice to get in play. Yeah, I guess we'll just get as many plus one counters as possible then. Play Underworld Dreams and Dread Presence. Also gives us an extra chum blocker if needed. And then next turn we can play File and maybe start drawing two cards per turn. That works. Back up to 13. They can still activate Bill twice, at the very least. Double up to four counters. And now nick those as well. So yeah, this can go up to eight counters now. So that would be an attack for 13, actually. It's going to be a Gold Vein Hydra instead. Yeah, I think that just kills me now. 12-12, Vigilance Trample Haste, so I can at most soak up 4 damage and still die. Alright, that's too bad. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Pantlaza. Dinosaurs are hands a little slow, 
Got some removal. Necro could be powerful, especially with Grim Servant, since we'll have a lot of devotion. So I don't hate it. Question is if we play Rebirth or keep it to protect our commander. I will need to hit some more land drops. And some of the removal might exile my creature anyway, so I'm not sure how good it's actually going to be. Opponent starts with Kami putting a land in play. Yeah, let's just play this tapped. Edict now not the best with Kami in play if we name creature. But we still have a Heartless Act. And Domri, alright, so we'll probably name Planeswalker instead. As soon as we get priority. And then, not opposed to playing Necro, could also play it next turn alongside our commander and for now keep up Heartless Act. Sure. I mean, it is six life we're paying basically by waiting. Maybe it's not worth it. And then I can activate it maybe three or four times. Okay. Sanguine Bond, perfect. So now we have a combo we can try to assemble. Discard Swamp, discard... Do I need Jet Medallion? Could still be useful, I suppose. Maybe Thoughtseize isn't needed, even though it gives me a bit of interaction. Could get rid of two Swamps, but that feels greedy. Yeah, let's just ditch Thoughtseize. I'll go with my own game plan. And then next turn, could play my commander, might prefer going Medallion, keep a Partless Act. And I'll draw two more. Grey Merchant's perfect, too. Invasion of Zendikar for more ramp. So next turn they can play Pont Laza. No, I just Heartless Act the Kami. Feels like a bit of a waste. Alright, so what are we planning here? If I play my commander, three mana, two swamps left over. Could still play a Grey Merchant at the very least. That's a good starting point. And then next turn I can drop Sanguine Bonds, Grim Servants, and uh, try and get the last combo piece. Yeah, seems fine. Back up to 14. And maybe hitting a land drop could be okay here. And we can still Heartless Act by paying two life. Found Villas as well. And there's Pontlaza. Wait and see what they discover. Shatter the sky to wipe the board, that's too bad. So I guess I don't need to Heartless Act if they cast it. So now it's going to take me a little bit longer to set up the combo, but we'll still get there. So if I Sanguine Bond, I'll still need a way to initiate the combo. Maybe we go File into Ashiok. And then leverage Ashok for a while. Pretty nice with Necro as well. And then... Do we want Swamp or Undying Malice? This could be a way to protect our commander if we want to redeploy it. Alright, fine. So exile the Swamp. And then activate Necro Bunch, which thanks to Ashok just exiles some cards instead of having to pay life. 
have to be careful that we still leave our combo pieces in the deck, of course, and actually exile the Exquisite Blood. So now I have to try and assemble a different combo. Yeah, let's just keep digging with Necro and we'll probably find something else useful. Alright, that's enough. So Veto and Sanguine Bonds essentially have the same effect. So drew the wrong half of the combo. That's all right. I can get rid of Iron Crag. At this point, do I even want Sanguine Bond and Veto? Probably not. Can also work up towards an Ashok Ultimate. Already have 23 mana value in exile. And now Kogla and Idaro is pretty good. They can attack down Ashok if they give it haste. So not keeping up a removal spell cost me here. I was expecting them to replay Pantlaza. So now without Ashok, I guess I'll still activate Necro a few times before it goes away. Just to get some more cards out of it. We could also play Villas here in the near future. And then we should have enough two card combos left in the deck to figure out a way to win. Or Villas can just get there over the course of a few turns. Alright, so take our turn. And then, yeah, could just cast Villas. And we would still have Undying Malice available. Don't hate that idea. And then now if I pay life to Necro, we also draw with Villas. So I could do that, although we're about to draw five more cards. So we're probably good for now. Beseech another tutor. And uh, Obliterator is not bad either. Probably won't need the Preacher. Alright. And then as soon as we tutor with one of them, we'll have a better idea what to get, but we can also check out the cards in Exile. So Peer into the Abyss is still in the deck, although we did lose Shieldreds and Underworld Dreams, so not actually the best combo. Maybe I'll just get Bolas' Citadel, although we exiled the Reservoir, which is the best card alongside it. So, yeah, we kind of painted ourselves in a corner a little bit by exiling so many cards. But of course an 8-8 Flyer with her opponent at 17 may not need any additional help. Utopia Sprawl is acceptable. We do have a Grey Merchant in the Graveyard. Do we still have Reanimate to bring that back? We do. So that could also be our plan. Maybe get a Blood Letter and then get back Grey Merchant. Or depending on our Devotion, if we play Obliterator, get back Grey Merchant. That could be enough. Kogla tanks the Invasion. Since we have Undying Malice, I think I can afford to block. And then we'll probably see... Something to damage Villas. Swordtooth to deal one to everything. Okay. Alright, so this is my ninth mana source. So I could play Obliterator, and then Grim Servants get Reanimates. And that might be good enough. But I can kind of take a look at our other options here. I get to draw a few more cards. Could grieve the opponent just to check out if the coast is clear. Pitching... Heartless Act. And uh, 
uh, yeah, it looks like the coast is clear. Get back Grey Merchant. Draw more cards. Drain for 13 and attack. Alright, so we had to be a little bit more creative here to find a win, but we still got there. Alright, so we got to see our commander in action, and yeah, this deck is certainly capable of drawing a lot of cards and setting up some powerful combos, so if that sounds like a fun time, give this a try. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.